Okay, in our video series of ECG interpretation made easy, in this video we are going to talk about atrial flutter. Atrial flutter is a very rapid, regular atrial tachycardia. It is the contraction of atria at a very rapid, fast rate. Now this atria are contracting at a very rapid rate, but these atria are not contracting due to the firing of SA node. SA node is not making these atria contract at a very fast pace. In atrial tachycardia, what happens is that an ectopic focus appears within the atria and that ectopic focus generates abnormal electrical currents and those abnormal electrical currents are generated and they cause atrial contractions. Those electrical currents from this ectopic focus are generated at such a fast pace that it results in atrial tachycardia. This atrial contraction in atrial flutter is not due to the firing of SA node. It's due to the firing of an ectopic focus lying within the atria. Now, how does these ectopic foci, ectopic pacemakers appear within the atria? These ectopic foci appear within the atria whenever there is myocardial injury, myocardial ischemia or hypoxia in myocardial infarction. Anything that changes the structure of atria, it can produce ectopic foci. Those ectopic foci produce electrical currents and those electrical currents result in rapid contraction of atria. Those electrical currents are produced in such a fast pace that will result in atrial tachycardia, atrial flutter. Now what causes this rapid atrial contraction and rapid electrical activity of this ectopic focus is a phenomena called as circus re-entry phenomena. What happens in circus re-entry phenomena is the, that these ectopic foci produce electrical current and those electrical current travel within the atria and cause contraction of the atria and then these electrical current return back to that ectopic focus and they stimulate the ectopic focus to produce more currents and then this ectopic focus produces more currents and those currents travel within the atria and then they return back and then they stimulate that ectopic focus again so there is a positive loop that loop causes produces electrical currents and those electrical currents in turn furthermore activate this ectopic focus to produce more current so that a, a vicious cycle is created and that circus re-entry phenomena causes rapid contraction that is that results from scarring and enlarged right atrium now, atrial flutter have a classical appearance on ECG that thought tooth appearance is pathognomic for atrial flutter. This is how the atrial contractions will appear. Ventricles are contracting at a slower pace and look at the contractions of atria. There are so many flutter waves that are present. And these flutter waves appear like a sore tooth that is called as a sore tooth appearance. Now these are not P waves, these are flutter waves and they are written with a capital F. They are not called P waves, they are F waves, the capital F. Remember small f denotes fibrillary waves. We will talk about fibrillary wave in atrial fibrillation. But atrial flutter is denoted with a capital F wave and these flutter waves are more prominently seen in lead 2, 3, AVF and V1. Now coming to the causes of atrial flutter. The causes of atrial flutter can be remembered with a mnemonic MAD RAT triple P. Myocardial infarction, very important cause. Atherosclerosis, D for drugs like digoxin, rheumatic heart disease, anything that damages heart can result in ectopic focus, ectopic pacemaker. Alcoholic holiday heart syndrome, an important thing, alcoholic holiday heart syndrome, what happens is that the person is not drinking alcohol during the week and all of a sudden that person takes a lot of alcohol, the person starts binge drinking during the weekend. And when person starts binge drinking during the weekend, during the holidays, that person develops a rapid atrial contractions, that person develops tachycardia. Remember, alcohol causes atrial tachycardia whenever there is increased consumption of alcohol that increased consumption of alcohol causes tachycardia increase heart rate and it predisposes the heart to develop atrial flutter that is called as alcoholic holiday heart syndrome thyrotoxicosis increased thyroxine causes atrial contraction pulmonary embolism pericarditis pneumonia now these are all the causes that can result in atrial flutter 
Now remember, there is a certain pattern to which these flutter waves appear. These flutter waves can be in a certain ratio. You can calculate the flutter waves. Now there are one, two, three, four flutter waves followed by a QRS complex. So there can be a four ratio one where there are four flutter waves and one QRS. There can be three flutter waves followed by a QRS complex. There can sometimes be two flutter waves followed by a QRS complex. And remember two ratio one is the most common one. One ratio one flutter can also be seen. But if in one ECG, if you have four ratio one, you also have three ratio one, you have more than one ratio that is called as a variable conduction ECG, variable conduction atrial flutter. What you do is how do you check this ratio? What you do is that you draw this a line through the peak of these flutter waves. You draw lines through the peak of these flutter waves and you calculate the number of flutter waves after uh, every QRS. So the, the, there are four flutter waves and after that there is a QRS. So it's a four ratio one. And if you look over here, if you draw lines through these flutter waves, the peaks of these flutter waves, this is three ratio one. So within one ECG, we have four ratio one. We also have three ratio one. So it is a variable conduction ECG, atrial flutter with variable conduction. Now, if you look at this ECG, in this ECG, you can easily see in the V1, the flutter waves. Look at the flutter wave. This is classical sawtooth appearance. This is pathognomic. There is nothing else that appears like this in ECG. This is atrial flutter. Now, if we zoom in this ECG, you can easily appreciate the flutter wave. Now, let's count the flutter waves. Let's take out the ratio. If you look over here, we have one, two, three three peaks followed by a QRS complex. So it is three ratio one, three flutter waves and one QRS complex. If you look over here, we have one, two, three, four P waves followed by a QRS complex. So within one ECG, we have two ratios, three ratio one as well as four ratio one. So we call it atrial flutter with variable conduction. Now let's discuss the characteristics of atrial flutter. In an atrial flutter, the atria are contracting at a different rate at a much faster rapid regular rate and ventricles are contracting at a slow rate and ventricles are usually contracting at an irregular rate. The atrial contraction rate is between 200 to 400 beats per minute and ventricles are contracting from 100 to 300 beats per minute. Usually the ventricles are contracting at a slower rate as compared to the atria. Regularity, the atrial waves, the flutter waves are regular, but the QRS complexes can sometimes be irregular. So irregularity can be regular or it can be irregular. P waves, P waves are absent. There are no P waves. P waves appear whenever SA node drives the electrical activity, but SA node is not driving the electrical activity in atrial flutter. There are F wave flutter waves that appear due to the ectopic focus electrical activity. P to QRS ratio. There is no P to QRS ratio. There is flutter to QRS ratio. That can be constant where either you have two ratio one, two ratio one, two ratio one, or if within one ECG you have different ratios that is called as a variable conduction. PR interval is absent since we do not have a P wave. The QRS complex is normal because the problem is in the atria. The ventricles are fine. Ventricles are normal. The problem is in the atria. So the QRS complex is mostly normal. Now let's practice some ECGs. We'll solve the ECGs of atrial flutter together and we'll, we'll master it. Coming to the first ECG, now if you look at this ECG, these are the flutter waves followed by the QRS complexes. These are the flutter waves followed by the QRS complexes. The QRS complexes are coming at an irregular rate. Now remember, sometimes whenever you are not able to appreciate the classical pathognomic sawtooth appearance, what you can do is that you can turn the ECG upside down. This is a trick to see the flutter wave. Now let's turn this ECG upside down. This is V1 and we have now turned it upside down. Now look at the ECG. This is the classical sawtooth appearance. So the trick is whenever you suspect that the patient is having atrial flutter and uh, the ECG is not showing the classic pathognomic picture, what you should do is that you should turn the ECG upside down and then look at the ECG. Now this is the classical pathognomic sawtooth appearance. 
let's turn it back over and let's calculate the heart rate now remember the atria we have to calculate the heart rate in atria separately the atrial rate is calculated separately and if you look at the atrial rate there is almost one uh, less than one large box so the atrial rate is around 310 beats per minute now remember i have talked about heart rate calculation regularity p waves pr interval qrs complex in detail in my video on determination of rhythm you can check out the link given in the description below now the atrial rate there is one large box or less than that so the atrial rate is around 310 beats per minute if we calculate the ventricular rate in the ventricular rate we have an irregularity in the ventricular rate now if we have we have then irregular rate of ventricles in such case what you have to do is that you have to calculate the shortest rr interval and you also have to calculate rate in the longest rr interval and you give a certain range you calculate rate in the shortest rr interval and you calculate the uh, uh, heart rate in the longest rr interval and you give a certain range of heart rate that the heart rate is ranging in between this and this because it will give uh, it will give an idea about how much irregular that rhythm is now if we calculate rate over here so we have one large box and we have less than uh, the second one one and a half or more so 300 150 so we can say that we have a heart rate of 160 beats per minute now if you calculate the longest rr interval in the longest rr interval we have one two three four five and more than five so 300 150 175 60 and slightly more so it's 55 to 160 beats per minute so you give a certain range in an irregular rhythm to show the irregularity you calculate the atrial rate separately you can calculate the ventricular rate separately it is an irregular rhythm the P waves are absent, there are flutter waves. If you look at the PR interval, the PR interval is absent because we have no P waves. If you look at the QRS complex, the QRS complex are normal, although they are upside down, but since we are looking at V1, V1 has QRS complex upside down. They are narrow, they are uh, sh sharply pointed and they have steep angles and this is the normal QRS. A normal QRS is the one in which, which is less than three small boxes wide. So this is less than three small boxes wide, it's almost two or slightly more than two small boxes. So it's a normal QRS complex. If you if we put an interpretation of this ECG, this ECG is basically atrial flutter with variable conduction. Now if you look at the P waves, they are one, two, three, four, four ratio one. And over here we have one, two, two ratio one. So there is variable conduction in this ECG. Now coming to the second ECG. Now if you look at the second ECG, what you should do is that you should pause the video right now try to solve this ecg yourself the trick is the tip is that you turn the ecg upside down and look at this ecg coming to the answer first of all what we will do is that we are not getting the classical sawtooth appearance so what we have to do is that we have to turn the ecg upside down let's turn the ecg upside down now look over here we have the classical two peaks the two sawtooths and a qrs two sawtooths and a qrs so so this is a classical pathognomic sawtooth appearance now let's turn it back over and if we calculate the heart rate we have two p waves and there is almost one large box so that is the heart rate is 300 beats or 290 beats per minute ventricular rate let's calculate the ventricular rate the ventricles are coming at a normal rate and there is almost one and two large boxes so the ventricular rate is almost 140 to 150 the regularity is regular the ecg is going on a regular pattern and if you look at the p waves the p waves are absent there are flutter waves P waves are absent, F waves are present, the capital F, small f denotes fibrillary wave, use capital F for atrial flutter. The PR interval is absent because there is no P wave. QRS complex, let's look at the QRS complex, the QRS complex is uh, normal, the QRS complex is not wide, if you look at, uh, if you are thinking that this is a wide appearance, basically this is a P wave, the normal QRS is coming down like this, so this is actually a part of P wave, this is not a wide QRS complex. This is a narrow QRS. The interpretation of this ECG is atrial flutter with 2 ratio 1 conduction. Now pause the video. Practice this ECG yourself. 
don't go straight away to the answers by simply looking at it you cannot determine the rhythm you cannot calculate the heart rates you have to practice ecg to master it this is a very volatile subject and you will forget everything always take a piece of paper and solve this ecg now this is a classical sawtooth appearance coming to the answers let's calculate the heart rate now if you look at the p to p interval there is almost one large box so this the heart rate is atrial rate is 300 beats per minute if you look at the ventricular rate in the ventricular rate we have an irregular rhythm so in irregular rhythm we will calculate the longest interval and we'll also calculate the shortest interval in the shortest interval we have one and two so we have a rate of 300 150 and almost 120 120 beats per minute now let's calculate the longer one 300 150 100 and almost 80 80 to 120 beats per minute is the ventricular rate you give it a range regularity is irregular the rr interval is irregular the p waves are absent f wave flutter waves are present pr interval is absent because there is no p wave the qrs complex is narrow sharply pointed steeply angled so that is a normal qrs complex the interpretation in this ecg let's calculate the ratio the uh, conduction ratio one two three almost four four ratio one over here we have one two three three ratio one so there is four ratio one as well as three ratio one so there is variable conduction atrial flutter with variable conduction is the interpretation of this ecg now coming to the presentation of atrial flutter atrial flutter is a very rapid heart rate and it can present with palpitations fatigue lightheadedness due to lack of perfusion to the brain shortness of breath this is the presentation of atrial flutter this is a non-specific presentation when you do the ecg then you can get an idea that the patient is having atrial flutter the palpitations is the big sign that you should go for a ecg Management of atrial flutter is just like atrial fibrillation. I have talked about atrial fibrillation in detail in my video on atrial fibrillation management. I have talked about rate control, rhythm control. So you have to control the rate. You control the rate with calcium channel blockers, beta blockers. And if uh, if a atrial flutter is refractory to the drug treatment, in such cases what you do is that you burn the ectopic foci. You ablate the ectopic foci within the area. And when you burn the ectopic foci, then you give you, then you pace the heart. You give a heart certain rate. And remember, whenever the atria are contracting at such a uh, rapid rate, they cause turbulence of blood in it. When whenever there is turbulence of blood in it, there is a chance of clot formation. The clots are formed, and those clots can get stuck in the brain and result in stroke. So, in such patients, what you do is that you anticoagulate these patients, you calculate the Chad West score, and after calculating the Chad West score, you put these patients on anticoagulants like novel anticoagulants drugs like rivaroxaban or even some patients warfarin before going into the summary if you liked my video please click on the subscribe button and make sure to check out my next video on atrial fibrillation ventricular tachycardias and ventricular fibrillation a very high yield topic in this video we talked about what is atrial flutter circus re-entry phenomena sawtooth appearance f waves causes of atrial flutter the variable conduction the conduction ratios we talked about how to determine the conduction ratio by drawing line through the peaks the characteristics of atrial flutter, the symptoms of atrial flutter, the management of atrial flutter and we practice many good ECGs. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on ECG interpretation made easy. Thank you very much. The link of those videos is given in the description below.